maybe. Uh, kind of seems like it. Uh, okay, cool. So, um, it's a little distracting. Um, hello, everyone. Um, so, if you are going to see this sometime, um, either now or later, uh, so what I'm doing today is I'm just trying to get into the habit of streaming again uh, because honestly it's been a while as you can probably tell um, so today um, what I'm gonna do is uh, I had finished building the desktop uh, I had streamed building a desktop before um, or this like super desktop so this is a 5900x uh, with uh, RTX 3070 in it um, and it's like kind of nuts. Um, so what I'm trying to do now is like, now that it's built and actually works, I'm trying to actually use it. Um, and I realized that I actually had like a year or so, maybe two years of photos that I just didn't offload off SD cards. And like, honestly, you should never ever do that. It's super, super bad workflow. Um, and I know the reason why I didn't do that um, Sorry, the reason why I wasn't working on it is because my desktop was dying and the storage was full. So um, there wasn't much I could do and I was basically just waiting like, well, I can either repair my old computer uh, or uh, just straight up build a new one and it seemed like a better idea to just build a new computer. Uh, Cause that thing, the other one was um, always kind of on its last legs for a few years. Uh, so yeah, it's actually, really cool what this new one is it's like so much better than my old computer it's crazy um so yeah uh now that i've actually gotten everything working um i am really excited to like just put photos on it but it is very daunting to try to deal with all these photos so um what i'm going to do to get myself back in the habit of streaming on these things and like sunday uh, i wanted to be like kind of fun like creative days uh where it's just like working on on uh, art um I am just going to stream what I was literally doing before I started streaming, which is catching up on YouTube videos. Uh, so you can see Matt Day here, love his channel, uh, and uh, literally just move photos around on my um, computer. Uh, and if you have any questions on what my workflow is, because it has kind of changed, um, feel free to ask. And if you have any questions on like, you know, if you're also dealing with photos, I would love to hear um, what you're doing um, or if you're wondering why I'm doing certain things um, one thing I'm trying to figure out if I want to buy is um, photo mechanic by I think it's camera bits uh, and the reason why is because I had demoed it before and it's like a really really fast ingest tool um, and I had worked out a workflow before where I was basically like I would put the card uh, the stuff on the card uh, all the pictures and stuff for my cards um, I had already put them on my hard drive to just like, I feel safer just moving them onto my hard drive um, and having them in two places right away. Uh, and what I was doing was I was actually using Photo Mechanic to preview the images and then import them to a different folder on my computer. Uh, and then that way, like I could preview them, see which ones I wanted to keep and then use photo mechanics like way faster ingest tool to like just render all the thumbnails or actually I wasn't moving them. Um, I would uh, preview the thumbnails with photo mechanic, see if they're good. If they're not good, just delete them off the, the um, hard drive. Uh, and then after everything worked out okay, I would actually import them in Lightroom. And I know people are gonna say like capture one over Lightroom. I don't really care. Uh, I have probably 300,000 pictures in Lightroom and I just cannot move them to capture one. Um, so right now it's just like way easier to do exactly what I'm doing. So um, maybe at some point uh, I will be able to do uh, uh, the individual catalogs or something like capture one does, uh, but I have never worked in that way and I don't really like working in that way. Um, the only thing I could think of where that uh, would have been helpful was a wedding I shot actually back in 2019. And I feel really guilty because like, I feel like there's still work I want to do on those photos. So like my computer being dead is like really crappy. Um, yeah, so I delivered um, digital versions, but I haven't like, I'm just maybe too much of a perfectionist. I want to keep working on them. Um, but yeah, um, so just gonna YouTube and move photos. Uh, and if anyone pops on and has any questions, like I will be here. Uh, and you can feel free to 
we can talk about like whether or not these videos are good uh but i'm catching up on like i don't know like 140 different videos in my uh watch later um yeah and if you haven't seen me in a while like uh you can tell my hair is really long and pretty messy and it is in it wow that is a way bigger man bun than i expected that okay <laughs> uh cool all right well that was surprising um yeah so um uh yeah i'm just gonna get to work uh and i will uh be keeping an eye on chat and i will talk to you all soon all right cool 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 if i see anything interesting in my pictures i'll probably show them on the screen but otherwise like it's pretty painless <laughs> Or pretty pretty boring I'd say like is it all that fun to to edit uh, not edit but like look at your own thumbnails and stuff after the fact eh, whatever I think it's more fun to like take these things and actually work on them all right so in the meantime I'm gonna turn this up so hopefully this isn't too loud but at least it's like something to, to listen to because I don't know this is like the hardest part I think of streaming. I don't know understand how people do it is they just uh uh they just keep talking. It's just like I don't understand. <laughs> um yeah. Okay, that's all gone. Just double check. Yeah, zero. So I think like one of the kind of annoying things I realized like I have so many pictures going back so many years is because uh uh, I use my phone a lot, and I uh, had a really bad way of moving photos off my phone onto my computer. So um, what I was doing, uh, they would automatically go up to OneDrive, which is not the thing I actually have a problem with. Um, when I moved them from my internal phone storage, which is like also always full, um, I would try to move them onto the SD card that was in my phone. And uh, I did not do that regularly. Um, so of course, what ends up happening is, I don't know the last time I moved photos off the SD card. Um, and there are definitely pictures that like, uh, I, I guess I didn't, they didn't upload for some reason, like they didn't go to OneDrive uh, or they, I just deleted them and they, they were still worth looking at. So it's kind of sh crappy. <laughs> um, that I just didn't have them anymore. Um, so yeah, so uh, definitely, uh, especially if your phone is involved and you take a lot of, like for me, um, obviously like I've never had a problem with people uh, using their phones to take photos. Um, it's the kind of one of those like right tool for the job sort of things. Um, if you don't have your, um, if you don't have a real camera uh, and phone is all you've got then like feel free to use it um, I definitely prefer an actual camera for a lot of reasons um, but I always use my phone camera for like really quick shots like kind of things that are like snapshotty um, especially just to like essentially take visual notes um, and uh, if I see anything like food related uh, I do not use my actual camera um, I used to and then it was like why uh this is just like extra work for me and like the people who would actually kind of look at my like food photos are basically just like really casual um consumers of my um like food snapshots uh which um i guess i say this and then like i regularly will upload food photos to uh like google maps and stuff and like uh I'm always surprised that, like, occasionally get an email from Google Maps, like, hey, this many people looked at your, your photos on Google Maps. And I was like, cool. Uh, I didn't do anything for that. I just uploaded the picture. <laughs> um, yeah. So this video that uh, is on over here is uh, Matt Day's going over his 2020 photo album. Um, and, like, uh, I usually really like his channel. Uh, very chill. Um, pretty cool pictures uh excuse me and i think like good general attitude that he has towards towards art and uh making his stuff work um yeah and i think
think the hard part is like when I'm doing work like this right now, uh, I'm generally listening, but now that I'm on stream, I'm like, shouldn't I be talking? Uh, yeah. Um, so right now I am on, and you can't see it, uh, I'm going through 2019, uh, September 12th. So there are definitely uh, older pictures in here. Uh, and the stuff I'm looking at now, I guess like uh, when I was, this was when I was in Seattle for boot camp, uh, not military boot camp, uh, coding boot camp for data science. And um, these, like, <laughs> I was thinking I was gonna vlog and stuff uh, more frequently. So I had recorded stuff on like, it was like me working out in the gym and like some of those are just like spot checks on my form. Um, but I don't know, it's kind of amusing to see these things. Uh, yeah, so um, the reason why I was using photo mechanic is because um, I had heard it was very fast uh, and I had never tried it. So I went and got the, the uh, trial and figured I'd give it a shot. And like, I 100% agree that that is extremely fast software. Um, I saw people like um, asking whether it could be faster. Uh, someone said like, can you just like send it to the GPU? Uh, and the, I think the main engineer slash founder was like, no, because it would be slower if I send it to the GPU, which like, I guess it makes sense. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really cool software. I, I totally recommend it if you like um, want to use it as an ingest method uh, because it is so fast. Like you'll see the thumbnails like almost right away. Um, but uh, the problem is that it is uh, $300, I think. So it was a bit much for me to, to shell out for. Um, although like it saves so much time, time is money. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, I'm really still thinking about it, but it, it is really expensive. Um, what I wish, um, so I shoot all my stuff in RAW, um, and what I wish is that uh, Windows 10, for some reason, like it doesn't just render thumbnails um, directly. Uh, like I think you can download a codec, and sometimes that codec costs money. Um, so it is kind of confusing, like, why can't I just like have uh, Explorer just render this for me and can take a look? Um, and then the other thing is if you're shooting raw uh, to render the, when you open the raw file, uh, that also takes a little bit of time to generate, like decode the sensor data and then generate a, a preview or a JPEG. Um, I guess like one fix is you could shoot um, raw plus JPEG and embed the JPEG into the raw uh, and then like, I think it will render, it will just display the JPEG, but like, that's not really what I want to do. It increases this, the file size like pretty dramatically. Uh, and in the past, it kind of gave me some headaches uh, handling the files in Lightroom. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying now, since I am a paying subscriber to uh, Creative Cloud, I'm trying to see if I can use Adobe Bridge to do the same thing that um, Photo Mechanic did, uh, but it's just not as fast. And it, it does seem like quite a bit clunkier. Um, so yeah, but I don't know. My general workflow is to uh, take the SD card, um, move, copy the files off the SD card onto the hard drive. Then when they're copied, take the SD card out and then I put it into like, I just got this like not too long ago. Uh, this is a, um, someone on Etsy sell these things and I think I found it from um, Nigel Bajos, uh, his YouTube channel. Um, like someone just 3D prints, 3D prints these things out of resin um, and they're designed to hold SD cards. Um, and I've got two of them. So what I've got is like one, um, I should actually write directly on the holders. Uh, I've got one that like, I take them out of the camera and I put them in here. Uh, and then after I transfer all the stuff on the cards onto the computer, I then put them on here. And these mean that they are ready to be like reformatted. Um, typically, uh, what I like to do is I take the, the card, 
um, dump all the stuff into one SD, uh, onto one hard drive, and then um, if those are good, I will use Lightroom to like import and create a new DNG. Uh, this is another workflow thing that maybe I'm reconsidering because like I don't really like how um, Adobe DNGs like I. So this is a tangent, but um, what I would do is like I would do um, Adobe, uh, you know, copy as a DNG, uh, and then put those working DNGs on a different hard drive. So that way I would have like uh, two copies on my computer, uh, and then I would back that up maybe quarterly. I haven't, I need to fix that. I haven't done that in a while. Um, back that up to an off this device storage um, or off this computer storage. Uh, and one of the things I'm finding that I don't really like is uh, the Adobe DNGs may not necessarily be working in other software. Um, and the thing I don't like about the Adobe DNGs in particular is when I rented a uh, Fuji uh, GFX uh, 100, uh, it took the RAF, like raw files from the Fuji DNG, uh, those are 100 megapixel, so uh, the raw files were about 100 megabytes. And something with the DNG, like, it was really weird. Uh, they turned them into, like, a quarter of the size. Um, and I was like, I'm not compressing anything. Oh, this is uh, Nick Carver. I also love his channel, uh, More Film Photography, especially when he does panoramas. Cool stuff. Um, uh, oh, prints very cool very cool uh so i just didn't understand like how is it losing like 75 percent of the file size and still not like is it worse is it the same quality uh so i used capture one at the time like a trial of capture one for the fuji files but it was also like okay well if this is gonna be a problem in the future then like i need to figure out a way around this because like i cannot keep doing this it's uh it's it's dangerous right because like i don't know what is happening with my my files um so yeah uh if y'all know um of a way to back up these uh files and folders maybe it's better to to not like instead of uh copy as dng just copy it straight over to a new hard drive um or a different hard drive and then work off of those directly in lightroom um I don't know if there's a speed advantage uh, to using a DNG uh, or a save or file size advantage. Um, I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of questions on this. Uh, and then when I looked on the internet, there's not really a whole lot of answers. Um, so yeah, uh, I'd love to hear what other people have to say about this. Uh, if you've got more experience. So yeah. Uh, I wanted to show you the floor because the floor is we're hideous. And, uh, and uh, I will turn up the YouTube video because I'm just going to uh, listen to that and then uh, maybe once in a while chime in with something uh, if I've got any commentary or maybe if I want to show something off in, in these pictures. Uh, but yeah, hopefully it, this doesn't get me in trouble. I don't really know what the rules are for like having YouTube on your stream. Um, I don't know. seems like fair use. I'm being entertained. <laughs> Actually, this might get me in trouble. They have like audio checkers, I think, but whatever, it's fine. Um, I'm almost done. I've got like two months of 2019 left to go through. It is a slog. Um, or is it a slug two or slug three, right? Oh, so many users. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what else is going on in life. Um, I guess I'm trying to get a new monitor. Um, I am going a little crazy uh, with this monitor that I am working on right now. Uh, it's really nice. It is really nice from 2009. Uh, so there's things with it that I don't like. And then, um, to be honest, like super niche 
picky things. Um, I am not cl not sure how many people will actually be worried about these things, but like, I want to print more. Uh, I have a printer in the other room. Um, you've seen it in some of these some of my YouTube videos, um, and uh, I really kind of care about color accuracy when when printing. Um, I just don't want to print wrong as often. Um, and uh, this particular monitor I bought in 2009 because it was supposed to have 10 bit color, which is supposed to help you like see how the image is supposed to look um, and is really color accurate. Like it's supposed to have like uh, 99, I think percent Adobe RGB. It might be 97, I don't remember. So it's supposed to print like more accurately, like display the colors more accurately compared to print. Um, and that was fine. Uh, unfortunately, I found out after I bought it um, that it wasn't a true 10-bit panel. Uh, it was actually a 8-bit, plus they do this like dithering trick so that like it can simulate the colors uh, to make it fully 10-bit. Um, so uh, I'm trying to upgrade this monitor now. Like there's a lot of things that drive me crazy about it. Like it's the, the bezels being thicker uh, means that it takes up a lot more space. It is quite heavy. It is not very bright. Um, actually, this thing is so heavy, I can't put it on a monitor arm. Like, I have to get a single arm to move it around. I can't put it on one of these dual arms that I have back here because it's above the weight limit. Um, uh, it gets really hot <laughs> uh, because it uses, like, older LCD te uh, tech. Uh, so it's not very bright. It gets hot, which means it makes working nearby it warm. Um, and, like sometimes I can actually feel like the heat, like if you put your hand here, you'll actually feel how warm uh, this monitor can get versus like, you don't feel anything from, from this one. And then this one's actually from, from work. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to get a new one uh, that has uh, real 10 bit color because I don't know if I want to buy the same panel technology from like 12 years ago, right? Um, so real 10-bit color, um, I don't really care about brightness. Um, I am not sure why brightness became like a major focus as a feature for a desktop monitor. That is kind of confusing to me. Um, like indoors, like with this thing, I, you don't see it, but I used to have a shade and it's somewhere around here. And like for very color accurate specific things, like I would use the shade. Um, why someone needs like a thousand nit is very confusing to me because it's like too bright um and i know it's for hdr but like i mean I, I i don't see the appeal uh so i would rather have um you know color accuracy over brightness uh and i would like 4k um because this is a 2560 by 1440 and it feels really weird to say that because like my phone my lg v35 has the same resolution <laughs> so like i don't know i just kind of feel little weird like going with a 2k screen uh especially when like i have 4k video like i'm working on 4k video um so yeah i've been trying to find a new one um oh the other thing is like since i just updated my graphics cards like i've got oh under here there's my eGPU that my laptop hooks up to um uh which is a 2060 super uh, and that, so that was from last year, maybe 18 months ago. Um, and I've got a 3070 uh, in my desktop now. So it feels weird. Um, it feels really weird and is kind of a huge hassle to have this older monitor, um, which has DVI, like two DVI ports and one display port and it turns out like the only um the only plug that supports that like 10 bit color is display port so i have to like keep swapping the cable um yeah it's it's starting to get an it's annoying uh and also makes me concerned because like uh i broke a display port cable from my old computer um I just didn't realize like how big the plug was. And I think like something, uh, when I was like pushing it down, something hooked onto it and like damaged the, the cable. So I was like, not really sure if this port's even working anymore. Um, so 
yeah and there's a lot of stuff going on with this like i have questions on like did i actually notice a 10-bit workflow before and it turns out the answer is no because uh, uh i wasn't using all full 10-bit software and now i am uh, so i'm like well am i going to notice if i actually go to full 10-bit um i have force the computer to render in 10 bit like but i know not everything is using full 10 bit stack like photoshop will and i think lightroom does now too um i have to check that uh but yeah so like if i didn't want 10 bit uh like true 10 bit i could get a new monitor quite easily and it would be way less expensive <laughs> um so yeah but i don't know uh I don't know. <laughs> um, I know LG is coming out the, my friend Joe and I were talking about it, like they're coming out with these OLED ones, but they're like so expensive, like $3,000. That's too much for me, um, but that would be nice. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm on 2019, August 24th. So the last, I'm going uh, newest, most recent to oldest um, in cleaning up these files. And the oldest date I've got is July. So we're almost there, almost there. <sighs> Man, I'm seeing like seeing this like drone footage that I shot when I was in Seattle like I, I kind of miss flying my drone uh, wouldn't be able to do it today it is raining uh, here in San Jose um, so yeah uh, actually I mean like I miss just being places <laughs> um, yeah Twenty third has nothing in it, so we are done there. Trying to think if anything exciting happened data science wise, because uh, that is my day job. Um, in case you don't remember, um, I am a data scientist by day and a photographer by other days um yeah uh i actually am thinking of streaming coding stuff on thursdays um we will see i thought i almost did it this past thursday uh, but uh something came up and i didn't have time um yeah so honestly uh my current job uh I am working for a Centers for Medicaid and Medicare, Medicare and Medicaid, uh, and I'm not actually doing data science right now. It's a little, little frustrating. Um, so the coding stuff I was going to do on Thursday is actually, um, I'll just probably pick something else to work on for fun. Uh, might even be semi work related, but like public data, uh, just to just kind of remind myself that like. You know, there's like cool stuff I can actually work on. Uh, it's not just, uh, not just me being like, this is the stuff you're stuck with. Uh, right now, I'm like, I'm spending a lot of time in Excel sheets, and it's like, that's this is not what this is not what I was supposed to be here for. <laughs> um, yeah, um, but you know, I'm trying to work towards uh, making my work life a little bit more more rewarding. Uh, and I don't know, that's probably like a common thing for people uh yeah i'm on 2019 august 16th um Sixteenth, moving on to fifteenth. Oh man, like a month left. Oh. 
let's see what other stuff. I got uh, my first dose of the vaccine about two weeks ago. So next Thursday, not this coming Thursday, I will get my second dose. A um, little worried uh, because of, um, you know, one of my friends had like pretty severe reaction to the second dose. Um, so I'm a little worried that what will happen. I'm fully, fully prepared to have to take like a day off of work <laughs> or a day or two off of work uh, if it goes bad. Um, yeah. All right. It's August 11th. Now we're on the 10th. This, uh, when I was in Seattle, I was like, I lived like down the block from this little cafe, and I went there like every weekend, um, because uh, I like their breakfast sandwiches, uh, and like seeing all my pictures of, uh, that I took of their breakfast sandwiches, I was like, oh, I really miss that place. Um, oh well. <laughs> I hope they are still doing okay, because I would gladly drop by that particular location. Uh, next time I'm up in Seattle. Oh wow, this is uh, August 9th, which is my very first day. No, that's not true. That was my first weekend um, up in there, up in Seattle. Uh, my first day was August 5th, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Interesting stuff, Mike. I really like this explanation as to advantages of drinking paper and what he likes about them. So I'm gonna definitely listen to this again. Um, printing, if you're a digital photographer and you've never printed your photos, it is it is an experience. Um, and there's so much stuff to learn even there. Uh, it's like every, everything with photography is just like a huge, uh, always, every, you're always learning. Um, and there's always ways to be a perfectionist about something. So it's, it's like a pretty rewarding thing. Um, but it is a lot of work. Uh, cool. Um, and oh, might as well also check on my Pokemon. <laughs> so this is one of the things I started when I came back in 20, I started playing this in, I think January of 2020. Um, I am playing Pogo, uh, <laughs> or Pokemon Go. Um, yeah, and I'm trying to make one of my buddies, like two of my buddies, best buddies, and I have two accounts um, because I don't have a real good reason for this actually. I just like, 
thought I, I at the time I had two phones, like a work phone and uh, my photo job phone uh, and my personal phone. And I was like, well, if I'm going to carry both phones all the time, why don't I just make one like a, a secondary pogo account for helping people out? Um, and then that phone died. Uh, so now I have... Um, I didn't want to put uh, Pogo on my main phone because when it was on there, it just like destroys my battery life. <laughs> um, so I was like, all right, I'll just buy like a cheap phone and just only use this for Pogo, uh, which is crazy, uh, but whatever. Um, it definitely does help and it's nice to have like separate devices, I think. Um, and then if this thing, like if the battery dies, I'm like, oh, that's fine. It's just literally a thing for a video game. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so right now I am taking my buddy for a simulated battle just to get the interaction points. <laughs> Uh, and I've got uh, one uh, perfect uh, Umbreon, um, and then one perfect uh, Chansey. So the Umbreon is going to go to Ultra League for PvP if I start playing again. I kind of stopped playing PvP. Uh, and then the Chansey will go to Great League uh, uh, once it gets like... Both of them kind of required um, maxing out, uh, so it's going to be... An investment um, in time, energy, all that kind of stuff, but yeah. We'll probably do a short stream because it is almost dinner time um, and figure out what to eat for dinner we got leftovers so that'll be good <laughs> trying to figure out where I want to go once I get vaccinated and honestly I might go up to Seattle again um, just for something that's like different but not too different <laughs> I remember that it's like kind of the same as here <laughs> uh, just different weather um, and I might go backpacking which like I guess I didn't need to be vaccinated to do that but on principle I didn't want to you know go to public places and stuff when it's like well you should be staying home um, yeah, uh, I think, like, I really did miss going on hikes and stuff, and or backpacking in particular. I've been doing a few day trips, um, because, like, everything was green for a while. Um, maybe it'll be green again because it rained today. I don't know, but, like, I'm kind of doubtful. <laughs> um, things that started to, like, get that, like, gold grasp burn i guess people here call it burning the grass but like that means something different now <laughs> um means a, actually that means a lot of things now that i think about it uh yeah uh with the wildfires and like also it's california and <laughs> um yeah so uh when the hills are green here it's it's so cool looking um and it's really nice to be outside uh, but most of the time the grass is, uh, gold, yellow, um, and it's like that for, like, a long time, so it, it gets really tedious, uh, and then plus, like, the sun can get pretty oppressive, um, uh, when it's really, like, hot, uh, or not hot, but just out, um, yeah. 
see. All right, we're on July 25th. We got three more days in 2019. Just three more. <laughs> July 24th. July 21st. Oh, this is a fun day. Um, was it a fun? <laughs> it was an. It was a fun day. Um, July 21st. Uh, I think. Uh, I think was the day. Let me check. Yeah, I think. Uh, my friend and I went to do street photography up in Seattle, or not Seattle, San Francisco. Uh, but then when we came, and when we came back, we had dinner um, with a bunch of our other friends. Um, but my brother like blew out a tire, uh, so it was like a lot of stuff just happening. <laughs> uh, what an interesting day. Seven twenty. Oh, I remember these pictures. Uh, here, why don't I show them? Um, how can I do that? Okay, so we'll switch over to this. Um, like, I was in Japantown and I saw this like these like uh, heavy duty like workers gloves uh, and they were, they were the same color as the, um, the like little walkway um, or the walking pad thing. This is like, you know, when you cross the street and like there's a ramp up, um, I don't know what it's called, uh, but like a, a mat or something that's more texture and grip than just like uh, concrete. Um, I saw these gloves on top of like the same color mat and i don't know i just thought it was cool but like obviously these are from my phone um so the white balance got all screwed up but i was like trying to figure out how to take pictures of this um so i know why i saw this um why i liked it, it was the color the like weird shape like i actually thought of cuttlefish when i first saw this um and uh how it was diagonal so what i was trying to do was basically uh correct for like I wanted like a grid pattern to make something square. Like this bothers me right now with the um, uh, askew lines. So I think like I did this with my phone um, and then I realized one limitation with phones is of course like uh, all these manufacturers will tell you what the approximate field of view is relative to a 35 millimeter full frame sensor. Um, and that's cool. Uh, however, it doesn't account for the fact that like these are at the heart of them still very ultra lo ultra wide lenses um so there's a lot of distortion and then when things are like just a little bit off uh that there's like quite a bit of like perspective distortion um so things that like are technically closer to the lens like even if it's just a little bit closer just a tiny bit it will look quite distorted um so i got this with my phone but i think i just redid this with my actual camera and i use like a a normal lens um so i don't know i like i just saw this and i liked it um it was it was like odd you know uh one of those like look down see something kind of interesting um or kind of weird just not expecting it uh yeah so that's the cool thing i saw that on that um go back to just streaming uh but yeah uh so this is the Last stuff from 2019, it looks like. Uh, so get to move on to 2020. Oh, wait, what are these pictures? I'm trying to dig through like the actual photos taken. It looks like I used like a real camera that day um, because um, something is in here. Yeah. 
Oh, hey, these are the uh, M6. show in just a second um, yeah okay so we're gonna open bridge I just deleted it okay uh, we're gonna open bridge and we're gonna open 2019 that's July 20th and I will show you the thing that I saw Six. Okay, and we will swap back over. Yeah. So uh, this is this is it. Um, all right. So I'm I'm really new to Bridge. I think I've opened this like maybe three times. <laughs> um, so I don't quite know what the UI is. Uh, is there a way I can just open this? bigger without actually doing like work on it like I just want to see it bigger um, hmm. is there a preview in camera raw get photos from camera hmm let's open in camera raw and see what happens I just want to see it this bigger so that like it shows up on stream uh, cool get started um, yeah, so you can kind of see what I was doing. Uh, I was talking about this process before. I wanted like straight grid, straight lines. Uh, I didn't like this one. Uh, yeah, and actually this is a really good test of the workflow uh, because like I wanted to use this like, um, Hello, wanted to use this like uh, camera bits uh, photo mechanic um, and right now I can tell that this is a little bit more annoying um, so if there are w there is a way to make these here we go make these thumbnails bigger so that I can actually see them um, so like of these um, this one I don't like I think you can see up here it's a little too close up there uh, this one probably also the same problem this one might be usable um really of these like maybe these two but i would actually i'd probably import all of these and then try to do work on in post to correct because i think what i ended up doing uh i think i don't like these actually now that i think about it because like there's also this like do you see this like little this bright spot here um and then this bright spot here like i found those really distracting and I think what I ended up wanting to care about was just this kind of square um, to really like uh, emphasize this diagonal uh, and the regularity of the grids and dots and this like irregularity of this, uh, this cuttlefish. Um, so I think I used either of these two because like these can be relatively corrected and there's enough space here that uh, could work in post. Uh, but yeah, and you can kind of tell that like this lens, what is this one? 22 millimeter. Yeah, so uh, this is the, the 35 mil equivalent. Um, it's because this is an APS-C sensor, it's still a little wide, so there's still some distortion, but it's definitely better than like that phone. Um, yeah, so um, I will probably try to see if I can find a video explaining this or just make one because I, I really like this picture. I actually. Uh, once I was done editing it, um, I printed it and posted to, um, I shared it in our um, San Jose Camera Club, or Santa Clara County Camera Club <laughs> a print competition. Um, I think other things I probably would have done is just get rid of this rock, uh, get rid of this toothpick, because uh, they are distracting, and maybe also this rock right here. Um, yeah, so that was something cool that... At least in my opinion, I thought it was cool uh, that I shared um, or at least used. Uh, so yeah, um, and we're gonna go back to cleaning the stuff. Um, I think that is the last day from 2019. Yep, yep, cool. So um, we got stuff from 
all the way to oh two weeks ago oh man did i not import picture again i don't think i shot anything this week um but it's gonna be bad if i'm still not doing the workflow process that i said i was gonna be doing <laughs> um yeah um so you can kind of see um the this is kind of tedious uh it's just stuff you got to do and if you do this properly um like one other thing that i definitely did wrong that i do normally is uh if i remember to import the pictures i will actually uh you can see um let me see i'll go back to here um here you can actually see it's done by date like all it is is date um and uh the problem is that like this tells you nothing right so like normally what i do is i actually have the date and then um um i put the uh what's it called in the folder name i will actually have like a very brief summary of what happened that day uh, and then inside here i have a text document that is just supposed to be like more detail um, and it this kind of functions as a journal for me so sometimes it's like things i saw like where did i go things i saw uh, what some of the pictures are and then like if there's any notes that i have for like oh i want to go back here and like try something with a different lens etc cetera, etc cetera. so part of the problem with if i don't do like my imports regularly i will forget all of this um, so it's kind of crappy because like especially places i want to go back to again if i don't remember what happened or what i did or what i wanted to do then like it's kind of just pictures right so um, sometimes like these things these picture ideas I have, uh, they actually need some work. So maybe it's like, I went on a couple hikes where uh, I took pictures just to have a note saying like, uh, come back here with the super telephoto because like what you've got right now isn't, isn't appropriate for the picture that you want. Um, so if I don't remember that, then like it's, oh, it didn't work very well, right? Like that was, that's the whole point of doing these things. Uh, maybe what I should be doing is bringing like an audio recorder or forcing myself to vlog when I go on these trips and just be like, okay, here are the things I'm saying and then there's a record of it. And then at least when I, especially with the vlog, when I go and uh, watch it or re-edit it uh, or edit it um, or even re-edit it, uh, I will see that I had thoughts about wherever I went. Um, so yeah um yeah uh, that is uh oh well uh so we're gonna go to 2020 now um oh i didn't even make a folder for 2021 so uh we'll show this again um how how i'm doing this right now uh i have on my hard drive uh this folder called it's basically staging um so what I do is uh, I have one folder that's just importing by device, and I have a folder for each device that I use. Um, some of these are like actually long retired, like my 5D Mark II, I almost, I've, I haven't used in like two or three years at this point. Um, Hero 4, I last time I used that was like three years ago. Um, but, uh, and th this Moto X4 is dead, so I don't have any more pictures from this thing. Um, actually, I should delete this folder because it's just, I'm never going to get anything. That phone just straight up died. It just does not work anymore. Um, but yeah, like uh, what I do is basically um, when I dump the card, I will just put them, uh, put the files into these subfolders. Um, and then uh, I have this other folder. When all the cards are on here, I have this like organized by date. And I make uh, using this template down here which has the same like breakdown of all the devices. Um, I just like copy this and I rename it to whatever the date is. Uh, and then I'm supposed to put like a description um, and then uh, move all the files from the import by device by date into those date folders. Excuse me. Um, and then um, on the actual drive, um, where they're supposed to be, not in the staging folder. Uh, I have this like camera shots and I divide it by year. So 2003 all the way up to now it's gonna be 2021. Um, yeah, uh, 
and then like this folder 23 gigs that's like i was backing these up to blu-ray discs uh so i'd put them into 23 gigabyte chunks and then offload them there um so this is kind of a rolling archive um so i've got like a bunch of blu-ray discs that have other photos like between 2006 and 2010 or 2011 um so uh i don't know actually those discs i know where they are but i don't think that's like a really reliable way to store these things and i think maybe i'll have to just buy like cheap like one terabyte spinning discs and just keep them around for for stuff like this um and just maybe for like one year per whatever terabyte might even be enough for some years um yeah uh and the reason why i do this is because lightroom has a bug uh <laughs> um i don't think they've ever fixed it but i have a video talking about like um lightroom can only display i think it's a thousand rows in each sub menu so when i didn't do this i just had like um kind of like in this organized by date when it was just dates uh it it wouldn't show all the the pictures so it was really bad um so I group them up by year because I will never get to the point where it's displaying at like a thousand because that, that would mean I'd have to have three years open basically. Uh, and there's no reason for, for it to do that. Um, he says, realizing that it could be possible to have three years open um, with the way, <laughs> with the way I, I treat my catalog. Um, so yeah, uh, this is for Lightroom Sanity. And then how it works is when I import into Lightroom, it creates a DNG with the same folder hierarchy. Uh, and that's why I wanted this all here because like it makes everything consistent with each other. Um, but yeah, um, hmm. now it's uh, kind of complicated uh, since it's been a while since I've done this. And also because like, I don't know if I actually want to do the, the DNG way. Um, yeah, so that is where I'm at. Um, and then I'm going to go back to playing YouTube. Um, if, uh, lately, I'm getting back into F1, uh, Formula One, uh, because of the Netflix docudrama series, the, uh, or docu-series, what was it called? Drive to Survive. Like, I thought it was so great. Uh, lots of drama, crazy, crazy drivers, crazy cars and technology. Um, I don't know, I thought it was super cool. Uh, holy crap I just realized um, holy crap I haven't put any of 2020 um, in my normal hierarchy like I'll show you um like the last time I did anything was apparently April 1st, 2020. So I don't have dates or anything to, to blend in here. I can just move these like straight over, which is just kind of insane. Um, wow, this is, this is like both a blessing and a curse because now I know that nothing's going to repeat so I don't have to manually compare all the folder contents. Um, but for my journaling stuff is like, this is, a worst case scenario um oh man okay cool so this means everything prior everything after april 1st can just move straight over right away um interesting okay cool 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 and here we go all right 159 folders moved uh still moving um man I can't, I can't believe you've done this. Uh, Aaron, I cannot believe that you did this to yourself. Like, uh, you just gave yourself such a huge nightmare in trying to manage your folders and files. And like, I'm even seeing now, like, oh. Okay, now I have to actually do some manual matching. Um, dang, okay. Oh boy.
Yeah, so that's what we're talking about with the text in Romans 6. Yeah. It's, it's letters to his friends um, on the John Newton uh, party. Well, Sam's in my office. I can't even really mind what I've bought you a text flat. Uh, so I'm realizing that uh, Textbert, um, I've never actually watched Textbert's weekly, and I heard it's very different from his normal stuff, and I can see that it is. Um, and definitely pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and I'm looking at like the thing I'm looking at right now is uh, these are pictures that were clearly for like a time lapse. Okay, cool. They do have the same size and date. Um, sometimes like I think when I change like daylight savings or something, it like changes something in the file and like, completely messes it up, and then I have to go through. Uh, and some of these, like, I've written so many files, it's actually re-rolled the counter over, and I've got matching file names from different dates. So it's just kind of a nightmare, like, that I can't see thumbnails, um, and I just don't know if I've already imported these files or not. Um, cool, but these are, these are in here. Uh, it kind of sucks. I know, um, I think Textbird is a really funny channel, and I really like his attitude when he's uh, presenting stuff. But uh, the weekly, which I wish I could, uh, I think I'll watch late in the future, but if the weekly is a recap of a bunch of devices that got announced that week, like, I kind of hate those because it's just like reading press releases and like he's doing it in his own way which is very entertaining but like I think because those videos are like a, a week old like I've already heard all about about the, those devices and for me it's like oh this is kind of like not a particularly good use of my time <laughs> Ooh, gotta skip this
Okay, so we're getting to some of these pictures are repeats of my phone photos, so that's okay. This is March 1st, 2020. Uh, okay, yeah. So maybe everything prior to this date uh, is already in here. Um, knock on wood. But at this point, it is going to be extremely tedious. Uh, well, I remember this day. This is when I um, met with this, uh, uh, like, sort of like anything goes kind of social group on Meetup. Um, I don't hang out with them anymore uh, for various reasons. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, we went and got boba tea, or boba, and it was pretty fun. Uh, it was like a cross meeting with a boba focus group. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I just saw this picture, it's uh, February 27th, and uh, Liliana, my friend, had, uh, we had all gone to um, Mono Lake, uh, which was awesome, awesome, awesome place. I actually really want to go back. Um, and I did go back, uh, except they, it was after the wildfire. It was this past fall, um, socially distanced everything. And uh, the Mono Lake was closed because they were still recovering from fire damage. And it was just crazy. I uh, couldn't show Brian, my brother, like how awesome this place was. And I felt pretty bad. Uh, we really hyped it up and it's like, what an awesome place. Um, yeah, so we came back and my, like, my car was very dusty and dirty and uh, during a photo club meeting, I think after like Leon had written like Mono Lake uh, in the dirt on my car, which was like, oh yeah, that's funny. <laughs> um, And then uh, this error that you can see on the screen right here is exactly the thing I was talking about. Like, I guess I changed daylight savings or something in the camera, and then uh, it like retroactively applied it to the card, and then it's just like messed up. Right now it says like, these files have the same file name and the same size, but I can't see the preview. Um, and they're just an hour off in the time uh, taken date. So it's kind of annoying. Um, I'm going to assume, based off of the fact that they have the same name, uh, the same size, they're from the same camera, uh, and this camera was rented, so uh, I didn't take that many pictures with it, that they're exactly the same folder or file, so I don't have to do anything to them. Um, and uh, yeah, so these are actually, uh, I was wrong, uh, these are um, G the GFX files, so seven of them totaled uh, just under 1.4 gigs so like each of these was 200 something megabytes so you can imagine my surprise when like lightroom was like here is a like i think it was like 70 megabyte uh dng which is like actually i say this and i'm not entirely sure so let's uh let's go back and open the thing um okay we are going to go to uh, yeah, they cut it in half. Um, so like, uh, here, um, this is the folder in the actual Lightroom, uh, like what Lightroom is using. Uh, and it is half the size, like a hundred megabytes versus 200 megabytes. And I don't know why. Um, so yeah, I, I just don't know if I should be using um, Lightroom for, I, yeah, Lightroom for medium format is probably definitely not a good call. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of weird that it does this. Um, I, I think I didn't actually find out why it did this. Uh, I never bothered to look because like number of uh, medium format users, um, the number of actual like digital photographers and the number of 
is actually surprisingly low that really care about this kind of stuff. Um, uh, and then the number that are using meme format cameras that cost $10,000 for a body is like surprisingly a lot lower, right? Um, so uh, I don't know what the solution is. Uh, and like, I think some of the people who buy these cameras are like uh, people with a lot of disposable income. I am not one of those people. Uh, and I think they just kind of share pictures online. Uh, they're not always the best ones and they don't always talk about the workflow involved. Um, I think it's just like, oh, look what I can do. Um, so that's cool. They, that's how they get their enjoyment. Uh, but it'd be really great if it was like, hey, does anyone know why it does this thing? Because it's, it's like super weird. Is there actually a quality difference? Um, so many questions. Uh, but again, like this is stuff that like, if anyone should explain this, it's probably Adobe because it is their DNG. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's really, really odd that it does this. Like, it's almost like it's compressing it for like no reason. Um, so yeah. Uh, go back to uh, working on these skip these delete them and uh, yeah I forgot to mention so when I said before that like my hard drives are full um, back in I want to say 2014 I bought like eight terabyte drives um, for my photo storage drives and those are the things that became full those are supposed to last a few years and I don't think they lasted that long um, yeah, uh, I went from, I bought ones w right when twos became available. Uh, and then years later, I bought fours when they were, I think, the biggest. Uh, and I filled those up pretty quickly, honestly. Um, and then I got eights uh, when I think tens are the biggest, or maybe eight was the biggest. Uh, and my old computer, like, one of the things that I always wondered was, was it slow because I was hitting, like, the device I.O. limit? Like at, at some point, one of my computers had like every SATA port was filled and I think I did an expansion card to get more SATA on there and it just wasn't like, it did give me errors sometimes where it was like device, too many devices registered in hardware and I was like, that's really weird. Uh, and it was because I just needed storage. Uh, <laughs> um, so I had to special order 18 terabyte drives for this computer and I have two of them. Um, so one is like, the source so everything from the sd cards goes onto that and the other one is the the working library that lightroom works off of uh and i'm always trying to cull but like i spent so much time culling to try to reduce the file size of the actual library that it's like uh the amount of time it takes to cull is honestly insane uh like you can say like, oh, just become a better photographer and then you don't have to throw away so many. And it's like, oh, that's really stupid. Um, because like, you don't know, right? Like sometimes you try things and sometimes it doesn't work out. Um, it's kind of weird that like, ever since I've been taking pictures, I'd say like I've around a 10 to 15% like keeper rate. And keeper rate means like, I will at least look at it more on the computer. Um, sorry, no. Uh, keeper a 10 to 15 percent keeper rate for me was like i will spend time to edit it um there's numerous ones that like i don't count the shutter accidentally going off i just delete those straight up but like some of them are like i can see what i was trying to do here uh is it worth me investing more time to try to tease something out of it answer is not always um and it turns out like yeah 10 to 15 percent it looks like 15 percent like make it to the point where it's like i'll at least adjust the slider uh, to see what it looks like if I try something. Um, and it, I don't understand why it's always been that consistent. I think like um, I've done like in purging older files, I've tried to clean those up uh, and I don't really gain that much space back, especially since those older cameras or older files, like I don't know how much time I spent cleaning up like photos from my 20D. It must have been like, I don't know, like a business week, like a working week worth of time uh, to clean up like maybe a couple months worth of 20D photos. But like just deleting, even deleting like a thousand photos from the 20D is only like eight gigs. Uh, <laughs> so it's like, oh, I spent all this time trying to clean these things up. And then like, I don't actually gain that much space back. Like eight gigs was a lot in the 20D time, but like, even using like a Canon EOS M5 or M6, um, which would be like 
I don't know, the, what's the equivalent of the 20D now, the 90D? So uh, if we went with the 90D, that's 32 megapixels now. So like eight gigs for, for that would probably be 60, 70 photos. Let's see. Okay, so um, Canon 90D file size, uh, CR3. 56 megabytes. So um, 8,000 8, divided by 56. Oh, actually, here we'll, we'll do this fun math exercise together. Um, so this is what uh, I've got searching. Uh, whoops. Right, so uh, you can see here, maybe, zoom in, and then expand this window. Um, so 56 megabytes is what we're, we're looking at. So uh, if we did 8,000 by 56, it's 143 images, right? So that's like one day, right? That's like, for if you're a street photographer, this is like a couple hours. Right. If you're sp if you're doing sports, this is like one seven second burst, I think. Right. <laughs> um, so it's it's kind of crazy. Like you can do all of this work to clean up like eight gigs um, and the, it just is not it doesn't actually save you that much space. Um, I think the crazy one would be like this eight gigs with those um, Fuji files. You can divide by 200. Right, it's only 40 shots. Uh, <laughs> so it's so much work. It is so much work to try to go back and clean up old photos just to save, clean up your hard drive by removing old photos. Uh, it's, ooh, it was it was definitely like a uh, Sisyphean task. Um, yeah, so, but uh, that's why I tried to modify my workflow to to fix these things on import, right? Like at least look at them uh, with something. And then if you know that they're not good for whatever reason, you can just straight up remove them from the hard drive and you don't have to think about them anymore. Um, yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> yep, still got a lot of stuff to go through now. This is uh, February 23rd, 2020, and it's pictures from Mono Lake, and they're, they're fun. Um, yeah, it was an interesting landscape trip. Uh, we went to, um, inadvertently, went to a number of the places that are featured in, like, macOS backgrounds. And honestly, I think, like, those macOS backgrounds, uh, those locations are, like, not, are, I think they're super overrated. Um, we went to one lake, uh, I wrote it down in here, Convict Lake? No, it wasn't Convict Lake, it was, uh, oh, that was a different trip. Um, yeah, wow, okay, so that was, that was the fall trip. Uh, we went to, I don't even remember, but like, <laughs> we went there and it was one of those that like, oh, this place is really famous because it's like featured North Lake or something. It's featured on, on a Mac OS background and like, tons of people coming here at sunrise to get the picture especially in fall foliage time uh and we went and it was like i mean it's fine um i i don't really see the appeal for like thousands of people to come here to try to recreate it uh and like i say this as we went there just to just to see it right like we heard it's really good excuse me and it's fine because like 
it is pretty, but like a lot of the mountain is bald, so it looks really ugly. <laughs> like if you're able to like zoom in on very particular parts of the landscape to see the foliage, it's gorgeous. But if you see everything with the lake and the mountains, like honestly, I think it sucks. <laughs> um, and I don't know, maybe this is like California bias where they ins like Californians insist that like their landscapes and their fall foliage are great. And it's like, I don't know, I, I'm from New England, you know, uh, we have like actual fall color uh, in more places than just the eastern Sierras. Uh, and you get more color variation and it's prettier in my opinion. And like you'll get like a whole hillside that's covered with it, not just like patches. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, most of those Mac OS backgrounds, I think, are actually really quite bad. <laughs> uh, like, I just, I don't understand why people, like, obsess over them. And, like, for work, I have a Mac. And, like, every time I, I it took me a while to, like, replace the backgrounds because, like, I kept forgetting. And it's my work computer. I can't just, like, plug in a USB drive to it. Um but it just drove me crazy. It's like, these are terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, like, I don't know. I, they're, they go to these, like, really awesome places to take these landscape pictures. Uh, and, like, I don't know. They, they get, like, very generic and, and kind of bad ones. It's kind of disappointing, in my opinion. Um, those photographers, like, make a crap ton of money for getting those shots and, like, Congrats to them. I'm sure that there's they've probably got pictures from like their reel that they wish that got picked instead. Uh, and I would love to see those. Um, yeah. Like, I'm aware that this is like a hot take city right now because like everyone loves, uh, seems like a Apple fans like love those Mac OS backgrounds. But like the, the ones for Yosemite where there's like, uh, sunset and like very harsh color or all right so i already revealed how i feel about those pictures but like the very strong contrast between like sunset golden or sunset orange and like cool blue of the shade um i didn't think those are very good like especially having been to yosemite now like six times um i don't know like you can get way better pictures of yosemite including of a uh, half dome and um, crap, I forgot what that, uh, El Capitan, um, you can get a way better picture of, the, of those, I, like, I don't know, I think that when they're lit up only by the, like, the one sliver of light, I think it's, like, the worst time to get pictures of those things, because it just, it's, I think it looks very jarring of just, like, one bright, colorful thing, and then the, everything else in shadow, um, but that's just me, uh, So I'm realizing what's kind of a hassle with how the uh, how my phone was importing pictures and me moving them to my SD card. Uh, when I deleted them, because like when I would have time, I would just flip through and see like is this actually good, um, and I would just delete them. And I think um, I was not consistent in doing that. So like I think some of these I looked at them on my computer after they transferred to OneDrive. Uh, and then others of these, um, I just moved them over. So like I, this particular day, February 21st, uh, I have pictures from like the SD card that like, I am pretty sure that they were blurry when I took them with my phone and I just deleted them. Um, but they are now repeated in my library because like, I don't know why they didn't exist there before because I can't tell by just looking at this like tiny thumbnail. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of giving myself extra duplicated work, which kind of sucks. Um, but, you know, I just want to be consistent. Um, so yeah, all right, February 19th. Uh, this channel, um, 
Ralph, not Robert. Uh, I was going to say Robert or Roger. Uh, Ralph Hancock is based in the UK. Uh, they, um, I, th I think it's a couple that runs it. It might be a family. Um, they just like bring cameras and camcorders to their local park and they just show the park life there. Uh, and they're little snippets. Like I think the longest clip I've seen from theirs is like three minutes long. Um, I don't know. I think it's really cool. You get to see like different birds and stuff do things that uh i've never seen some of these birds uh and some of them do like crazy things uh like they feature there's like one seagull that like eats birds uh and i think it's nuts uh yeah um or like it'll eat crabs uh and i just like i'm blown away like it's not things i would see normally and definitely not things I would have expected to see so I don't know um Food 52, I watch with my brother sometimes, so it's pretty good, and I'll just save that for later. This channel, uh, Photographic Eye, amazing. Amazing. Um, if you like um, like real photography and not gear reviews, like you should definitely check this channel out. It's very new, um, and it was recommended to me by someone from... Uh, which Discord was it? School of Arts? It might have been um, Photograptor. Um, but they recommended it because I liked um, previous videos from the Art of Photography, Ted Forbes' channel. Uh, Ted is doing his, he's branching off. Um, occasionally he has a video that's like excellent. Uh, there are a lot of gear reviews on there now. Um, I still sub to his channel, uh, but I definitely preferred when he had more engagement with the community uh, and more stuff about actual photography and the creative process. Um, and then like, this channel, um, the photographic eye, the, he's doing that. Um, so it's great. Uh, there's like retrospectives or in-depth analyses of like uh, successful photographers, interesting photographers, not always successful. Uh, and like, I don't know, I think, it, I think all the videos have been great. I just like binge watched this and uh, Jamie Windsor, which is also recommended by the same person. Um, yeah, so cool stuff, cool, 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 cool stuff. Um, highly recommend both uh, this and Jamie Windsor right now uh yeah yeah I, although like jamie i skip a lot of his like um lut creation or like uh preset creation stuff because like i don't really find that stuff to be particularly interesting um i don't really buy anyone's presets or anything um although like i understand that like that's part of where he gets his money so like maybe i should actually chip in for that but uh yeah uh, i don't really care to recreate the look of old film stock because uh, I will frankly just go shoot film. Um, I have film cameras uh, and it's just easier to do it that way. Um, I don't really like um, using, it's, it's like skeuomorphism, right? Like trying to um, apply a preset or a filter to make your picture look like how you think things should look based off of like whatever film there used to be. Maybe you never shot that. Maybe part of why it had that look was it degraded, you know? There's, there's a lot of variables in it. And like, ultimately the question is, does that make your picture look better? If you think that is a necessary part of your creative process, then like, that's great. Uh, yeah, then, then do it. But I, I feel like there's a lot of like, people just do these, like apply these filters without really thinking about it just because they think if, Make it look older will make it look better or make it look cooler and frankly like if it's just not a good picture and, and jamie windsor talks about this like if the, if the most interesting picture interesting thing about your photograph is that it looks nostalgic is your photograph has failed in my like it's just i mean it's blunt and, and it's harsh but like that shouldn't be the thing that people ooh and ah over right it should just be a good picture <laughs> um yeah But, you know, this is 
these are harsh-ish words. Uh, and to be honest, these are the things I say to myself about my creative process. Like, I want it to be of a certain quality level, especially when I show people. Um, so it is not enough for me to just put on something that like looks kind of cool, but isn't really there for a particular reason. Um, and especially like, I treat it as like anything I show people, um, it must have been worth the time investment for me to make it look presentable. Um, so uh, if the only thing that looks cool about a picture is that I put a filter on it, then like I, I am upset with myself. But if you, uh, for your work, uh, you're fine with like whatever it, you did. Um, if it looks cool and you're happy with it, then be happy with it. Yeah, don't worry about what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, this is just like how I approach my own work. Okay, what are we at for stream time? We're at like an hour and a half. Uh, so props to you if you are actually uh, tuning into this. Uh, it's totally cool. You can do what I'm doing and just like listen to me talk, I guess, and listen to uh, YouTube in the background. Um, but yeah, um, I am getting to the point where I'm getting pretty hungry and it's almost seven. So I might sign off fairly soon uh, and go get something to eat. Um, Let's work a little bit longer. Why don't we hit like even 7 p.m.? Um, all right, I'm on February 7th, 2020. Um, we're almost done with 20. You know what? Why don't we finish 2020? Yeah, that, I think that's a good natural cutoff. Um, so we're going to go to February 3rd. Moving some pictures over. All right, empty folders, so then this can get deleted. February 1st. Oh, yeah. I don't know what happened here, so why don't we show... Uh, we go so i didn't realize i had my phone in burst mode uh and this is like completely an accident uh i didn't mean to do this but basically i was like out on a walk um and i looked over and saw these clouds and i was like those things look like two pokemon fighting um and i just wanted a picture of it because i was like i don't know i think it looks really funny um uh, it looks really cool like i don't know it seemed like it kind of reminded me of like some flying pokemon maybe ho -Oh, uh and like a leo pluridon looking pokemon like something like that and it looked like they're just fighting in the sky and, and i'm looking at it now and it looks kind of like a crane on the right and it still looks like a leo pluridon on the left um but i just thought it was like a funny idea of like oh look two legendary mons battling out for whatever reason uh and um, I didn't realize my phone was totally on burst, and I didn't realize like how fast that burst would work. So I have like 31 pictures of the same thing. Um, yeah, so this is one of those like, oh yeah, I definitely deleted 30 of them because I didn't need 30 of the same picture. And these were bad. Like, I don't understand how they ended up being so blurry. So I'm just gonna straight up delete these. And there are four megabytes each, so it's 120 megabytes of just blurry garbage. Um, yeah, and then this is a repeat, so I can get rid of this. Um, and oop, there we go. All right, February 1st, so that's over with. January 30th, we're almost done. It's almost time to go get food. <laughs> oh, this was weird. This is so weird. Uh, I went. On, I was on a walk again, and like. Yeah, this is, uh, so January was when I was, like, definitely in the in the hunt for my uh, data science job. Um, and, like, I just saw this, and it was like, what happened here? Like, like there's got to be some story here, right? Like, it was just a bunch of hot sauce packets on the ground. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Uh, let's see. Um, 
yeah so that's that and i think that's the only picture from that day i think later on i went to that same exact spot uh so obviously it got cleaned up but like i went to that same exact spot and i think there's like 50 ketchup packets like all mashed into the into that like uh mat it was so strange um yeah <laughs> January 26th, all empty, There's only one picture. Oh, two files. Yeah, one picture from the 24th, so those are all gone. Two nineteen. Oh, hey, I think this is a uh, we so we really like this uh, pizza place nearby called Pizza California. Uh, and I think this was the first day that we got. Um, we're trying to figure out what else to get with our pizza. And um, the uh, cashier recommended they have Tabasco wings. Uh, and we're like, hmm. I never had those like what are those are they they're not buffalo wings um and she was saying like oh yeah these are really good and etc cetera, etc cetera. um and it was like all right well let's let's give it a try you know uh i think that was the first day we had those and those are those are really good i really like them a lot uh we've recommended them to our our friend who lives uh nearby whenever they get pizza from there um and i think like uh, I think they said they they got them like two or three days in a row, because <laughs> um, they're they're spicy. They've got these like uh, really tasty uh, red onions that are like maybe they're shallots. Uh, they're cooked in like chili oil or something like that. Like they're also spicy, but because they're caramelized onions, they're like sweet. Um, and like honestly, I wish that like it was possible to just get those as a topping because they're so good. Like the extra pieces I would just put on uh, whatever pizza I was eating. Um, 117. I don't know where, uh, which folder. I have pictures from like the 17th and I don't know where those pictures are. Oh, here we go, cool. the 17th there's like five more days and then i can take a break go for a stretch get something to eat um yeah looking forward to it my stomach definitely feels some some hunger right now oh that's weird That's odd. My folder for the 10th didn't have anything in it. That's super weird. I must have already imported the photos and I just, um, yeah, so I was trying to do this in OneDrive, basically have like a staging folder on OneDrive. But when the drives got full and then also when OneDrive got full, it was like a, a little bit of a consistency problem. I couldn't figure out like which things were actually there and which things weren't so that's part of the reason why i like went and re-imported all of these uh cards um so yeah i'm not sure what happened here all 
<laughs> Man, this is funny. I had like, I was writing blogs um, on doing data science stuff, and I guess I still kind of am. Um, but uh, I was really excited because I had just gotten my eGPU for my um, XPS 13. What did I just delete? Oh, okay, phew, that was the ninth. Okay. Um, and I was like, I plugged it in. I set everything. I set everything up. I plugged it in. I turned it on. And I'm like, all right, let me get, let me get like pictures for this blog, and I'll record it and all that kind of stuff. And I set everything up. And right when I went to take the picture, my computer green screened. And uh, that led to a very long investigation as to why uh, eGPUs are actually very unstable and they're not really that good. Uh, so, yeah, um, I still have mine and I do like using it. Uh, and when my desktop was dead and I was playing games with Joe, uh, I would use my uh, eGPU, which was great. Like, it was awesome to actually be able to play games, but also, like, it took a long time to get to the point where that was stable and I had to, like, do a bunch of stuff that was like not as plug and play and of course i found out I'm like well maybe this is better if you're on mac and then like that was part of my research like okay well one you can't use nvidia gpus because apple and nvidia haven't gotten along in years and two it's not actually more stable it's actually just as bad <laughs> um so it's pretty amazing that like eGPUs were really like hopefully hopefully it was like this is going to be the next big thing because you can like have your powerful thing as a dock um and then just like when you don't need it just have your laptop as is uh and then it turns out like wasn't actually that great which is a little disappointing um but yeah i think this is at lg uh, <laughs> this is at uh, san francisco That's January 4th. Alright, that's January 3rd, and I think that means I should get up and take a break. My Garmin. Uh, I'll bring this closer. Uh, my Garmin for sure. Um, it's got the red warning saying I haven't moved in a while, uh, and I am very short on steps. So I try to pace myself for um, hitting a thousand steps an hour. Uh, and my target, uh, if I do a thousand steps an hour, I won't hit my goal. So I have to like at least do a thousand, um, and then extra. Um, but right now I'm like two thousand short of where I should be for even like a thousand an hour. Um, so yeah. All right, it was good to, uh, oh wait, I got one more day. Uh, so that was January 3rd and I also have January 1st. So let's take care of that. Oh, that's 2021, Whew. okay. Oh yeah, that is 2021, okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, yeah, now it is definitely time to uh, take a break, go for a walk stretch um and set up my 2021 folder and that means i can just move all of these into here and that means i'm done organizing stuff for now so yeah cool um with that uh i just want to say uh i hope to see y'all again uh make this more regular um, Thursday, maybe do some actual code, uh, because that is more, not more fun. This is fun, but maybe Sunday, um, for art days, I can actually work on something and that'd be way more fun than this, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Uh, and I'll also try to announce it beforehand. So if people want to like hop on and ask questions or like just interact, uh, I would love that, honestly. Like, I know I spend a lot of time for work, especially like doing things digitally, but like, especially Sundays talking about um, more fun stuff or even like coding more fun stuff than uh, what I'm doing for work then like that'd be great um, so yeah if you want to reach out to me uh, my contact stuff is here I don't know where to put my hands here um, but you're already 
seemingly already watching me. Uh, but yeah, you can reach out to me on Twitch, uh, YouTube, Instagram. Um, I don't have TikTok. I don't know if I have time for that. Uh, I also don't know if I have the um, attention span for so many short videos. Um, but yeah, uh, just reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. Um, maybe I can also put my Discord tag in here one day. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess I will see you all possibly Thursday, uh, if not sooner, um, and Sunday likely too. All right. So with that, see you all later and uh, 